Hi, I'm Natalie Higgins, and you're watching NDE Talk. Today's guest is Ken Chin, author of Encounter with the Healer. He's also formed the Chin Guitar Project, which has donated over 2,000 guitars to children's hospitals across the nation. Today, Ken joins us to share his near-death experience, and we're going to learn about it today. So, Ken, welcome. Well, thanks so much, Natalie. I appreciate you having me on your program. And uh, um, yeah, it's a gr great opportunity. So we'll just give a little uh, background here. Around Christmas time, I was taking some time off from work. And, you know, I'm pretty outdoorsman. We have a ranch about an hour from my house. And I was going out there. I just enjoy doing it. You know, I could pay somebody to do it. But I was uh, throwing around some 60-pound bags of concrete there's different washout where the road washes out every now and then, just buckets of rocks, just having a little bit of fun. So, uh, great place to hunt and fish too. But uh, from that perspective, just to show you, you know, being able to toss around that and in just a couple of weeks' time uh, or less than that, um, you know, I couldn't even pick up a fork to feed myself. Mm. Um, at Christmas Eve, um, the family, we always have to get togethers. And so we were over at my brother's sister-in-law's house and uh, I knew something was wrong then. I uh, started sweating and just having cold chills. And, but I, I just kind of blew it off. You know, I'm a tough guy here. I'm, all, I'm, I'm fine. So I uh, forced myself. I made it through the evening and uh, came home, just went straight to bed. Well, the next day is Christmas. So Everybody comes over to my house or our house on Christmas. Oh, poor thing. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. This was not a good Christmas for yeah. me. Yeah. So I'm uh, laid up in bed all day. I did not get out to see anybody, didn't visit with any of the family or friends that came over. Um, I'm actually feeling worse. But my wife went and got a COVID test. Uh, you know, home test and I tested negative. So she thought, you know, that's good, you know, praise the Lord for that. And, um, I thought, well, you know, it's just a bad flu or something. I'm, I'm tough. I get over this. And so uh, a couple of days go by and I'm still not feeling any better. So we decided that, uh, I needed to go to, uh, what we call just a little ER clinic that treats patients. So I went there and immediately they diagnosed me with COVID. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's just, that's great. Uh, and they gave me some medication and sent me home and said, you know, if you don't feel better in a couple of days, come see us. Well, I was back again in a couple of days and um, wasn't feeling any better, feeling weaker, having a harder time breathing. I go back and they give me a, an oxygen tank and I've never been on oxygen in my entire life. Um, always been, uh, you know, very healthy. And to come home with that, and, you know, same same uh, story, you know, if you don't feel good, come back. So I'm back again in a couple of days. You know, they x-rayed my lungs, and I said, man, Mr. Chin, you know, you've got COVID pneumonia. And going, that's just great, you know. So they give me a, a, another antibiotic and send me home again. And uh, I was really beginning to feel like this was going south on me real quick went back a fourth time and thank God there was a doctor there yeah. and when he saw me he saw in me what he had experienced a year earlier and so he said you're not leaving the only way you're leaving here is by an ambulance and he said I am personally going to get you a uh, room at the local hospital I said hey I I'm good with that I knew things were not right so it took him about eight hours because at this time that's to give you a time sequence this was uh january the 4th was when i took the ambulance ride to the hospital so from january 4th uh you know uh, the hospitals they had the whole sixth floor was the critical covid patients they had the whole fourth floor was covid patients who weren't quite as critical uh, i guess that's you know somebody's making a judgment call there but so anyway i i uh listen to this particular doctor he took an interest in me and he would uh, come in about every hour as he was seeing people and it was just jammed out so 
he's telling me different things that he did. He actually put himself on a vent. Okay. Uh, and uh, he was on a vent for 12 days, and then he came off. He was one of the lucky few, I say. And uh, he realizes that. But it took him nine months to recover um, from wow. uh, his COVID. Yeah, yeah from his COVID experience to where he could go back and start working and treating patients. Mm, okay. um, so I get to the hospital January 4th. And when I get there, I'm thinking, you know, wow, you know, I've waited. I'm exhausted. I mean, I, I can barely stand. Um, not in good shape. And I'm, I'm confronted with I've got four different doctors Um and they're all just like, you know, hey, Mr. Chin, you know, you need to sign this DNR. Do not resuscitate. We want to put you on a ventilator. You know, uh, let us help you. And uh, they were just taking shots at me, all four of them. And I thought, wow, you know, I, I knew how I felt about that. All of the research I had done on, on vents, and I'm not trying to give anybody medical advice, but, but everything I'd read, said that only 12% of the people that go on ventilators live to come off of it. And I just told him, I said, I don't like those odds. You know, if I'm going to die, if you're, if what you're telling me is true, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die with the awareness that I have. And, you know, I, I'm going to go out like that. I'm not going to, you're not going to put me down like a, and uh, I'm, I'm going to go out with what I have. So um, anyway, they didn't like that. You know, they were like, you know, we're trying to help you, you know, let us, let us help you. That's what we're here for. We're here to help you. And I refused to follow their treatment. Um, so they had a, you know, they had a nurse uh, roll me in my bed down to the end of the hall there and um, I slid the door, pulled the curtain, and they put me on a, a, a BiPAP breathing machine. It's a couple of steps down, you know, and my blood oxygen at this time was really low. Even with the BiPAP machine, I was probably running, you know, the mid 80s and normals like yeah. 98. Mm -hmm. uh, so I really went from dealing with these doctors and all of a sudden I'm in a room all alone. No visitors, no wife, nobody, nobody. It's just me and God. And, um, you know, just to the power of our words too. I had, a, uh, you know, someone and, and, uh, there was a tech and he's got his back to me and he says these words and, you know, they've already dig, they've already dug my grave, you know, they're just waiting to throw me in it. He says, you know, people in your condition just don't get up and walk out of here. Yeah. And, uh, it just gave me this new sense to, uh, to fight and to battle it. And, and as soon as he said that he felt terrible, he, yeah, I could tell. And, and, um, you know, I don't I hold it imagine, against him. They yeah. Were, <laughs> yeah. They, they were seeing death all day long. This is about 10 30 at night and he's probably had a long shift and he's, you know, had enough. Uh, but, uh, from that point on my whole focus shifted, I said, okay, I knew how weak I was. I knew what was going on. And uh, I knew that if I closed my eyes and I went to sleep, that I was going to die. There's no question. So I purposed in my heart. I, I made up my mind. I said, you know, I'm going to I'm going to stay awake. I'm going to pray. I'm going to wrestle with God all night long. And the first thing I thought about was Jacob. You know, Jacob was alone. He thought it was the end of his life. You know, he was going to be facing his brother Esau the next day. Yeah. He thought he was going to die. He thought his family was going to die. They were going to get taken out. It said that he wrestled with the angel all night. And he he, he uh, prevailed with the angel. He, and he said, I will not let you go until you bless me. You know, and, uh, and that's where I was at. My cry and my prayer was, God. God, just extend my life. Let me live, God. I want to see my daughter uh, grow up and get more established. And I want to see her live to where, you know, she's uh, uh, has more of a foundation in you. And God, she's uh, more independent and doesn't need my help. God, just uh, be merciful to me. Grant me the ability to 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 hang on, to, to do that. You know, she was going to be fine financially, but it's just the other things that are even more important. 
And so I was just crying out to God. I mean, I, I'm broken. I'm in tears. I'm, I'm weeping before God. And all of these Bible passages and scriptures that I've known for 40, 50 years just begin to flood up and rise up within me. You know, I, I here I am facing a certain death. And I, I thought about the, uh, the Hebrew youth that were threatened, you know, they're going to get thrown into a fiery furnace. And, you know, it's a, a certain death awaits sin, just like it yeah. was awaiting me. And, uh, you know, the angel of God appeared and delivered them out of that fiery furnace and yeah you know I'm just, yeah 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 you know god manifested himself in different ways throughout the scriptures and you know god is the same yesterday today and forever and i'm praying god you know i need a miracle too god i, I i'm here and uh you know just these scriptures god you're my ever-present help in my time of need God, you know, I need you now. I don't need you tomorrow. I need you right now. I, I need deliverance. I need to be able to breathe. I need to be able to, you know, hang on and and, and uh, continue to live. I was fighting, fighting. And all these scriptures, uh, uh, Romans and Romans, it talks about if the spirit that, that dwelt in Christ, if it dwells in us, he will quicken our mortal bodies and give life to our mortal bodies. So I was praying through all of these verses that were just flooding my mind. Uh, and, uh, you know, I thought about Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane, how he was just in agony and crying out and just, uh, you know, he's fixing to go to the cross and die for the sins of the world. And, you know, he says to the disciples, he said, look, guys, couldn't you just hang out and pray with me for one hour? Yeah. yeah. You know, can't, can't you hang with me for just an hour? And, and I'm not trying to be super spiritual, Natalie. It's, that's Ken Chin. I mean, I, that's me. You know, my mind is like wonders and goes all over the place. And, you know, I've got this project to do. I've got that to do. I, you know, I'm a busy man and I, and all this stuff going on. But, but when you're faced with death mm. and when you're faced with eternity, there is a new uh, intensity and level that most people would never experience. Um, and so the will to live rose up within me and the will to fight. And so, you know, as I'm just sweating and trying to breathe and trying to take in some water, you know, I, I begin to feel, you know, the quickening of the spirit of God in my body. I felt like it was a jolt of electricity running through me, you know, and that, that was lasted for a period of time. And then, uh, then a little bit later on, it was just, I'm sitting there just and, and crying out to God, you know, I'm feeling a week again. This has kind of left me and I'm uh, just uh, sitting there in my bed and, and I look down upon myself and there's this white glowing light that's surrounding my body. And in the beginning, I, I was fearful. I was thought, oh, you know, I've read a people about seeing the light and i thought well this is the end of the road for ken chin <laughs> you know they were right i'm fixing to die you know that and then and uh, you know go to heaven and um you know there's nothing wrong with that but i just that was not the cry of my heart you know the cry of my heart was god let me live let me uh hang on uh you know um and so the fear though turned to fascination and then just as i began just to think the panic left me in this glowing white light that just, it, it was alive. Um, it was like the light was moving and there were like particles in the light. <laughs> it's hard to describe something supernatural like that, but um, like, you know, it's not like just looking at a light when you walk in a room and turn it on. And this light just, it, it just covered my body and, and I'm just looking at my hands and trying to turn them and going, wow, you know, this is just, how incredible is this? And I, I was in such a dimension when you, when you're in that element of life and death and flesh and the spirit, and there's this tension between the two worlds. I think most of the time we're all so busy, we don't really recognize the spiritual realm mm, you know yeah. god is a spirit god is a spirit the yeah. bible says in john 4 and uh you know they that worship him worship in spirit and truth and so um i begin to think about elisha the the prophet that uh you know the the king uh the uh, 
the enemy king was sending out his whole army to Elisha to take him. You know, this is mm -hmm. one man. He sent his army after one man because Elisha lived in that spirit realm. You know, he was giving the uh, king of Israel the directions before their army ever attacked him. He'd say, okay, the, the army's going to attack you from the west. So he would position his army on the west side. The next time he said, the army's coming at you from the south. Well, he's living in that spirit realm, communicating with God. So he moves his, his, moves his army to the south side. They're stopped again. So the enemy king's like, what's going on? I've got a traitor in my midst. But no, it wasn't. They said, you know, there's this prophet. This is a guy that, man, this guy's a weird dude. He hangs out and lives out in the mountains. You know, he's up in the hills, but he hears, he hears from God. And um, so they send the whole army and Elisha's servants like scared to death. He's living in this natural realm that where Ken Chen normally lives. And um, he says, oh, man, Elisha, they're fixing to kill us. It's, you know, it's been nice knowing you, but we're all fixing to die. Yeah. You know, and, you're, uh, and the prophet just walks outside. Simply walks outside. He says, God, open his eyes that he can see. Aww. And God opened his eyes so that he could see all the warring angels around them. And, you know, just like Elisha was seeing the whole time. And that's where I was at. I was like, God, this is a supernatural experience. My eyes were open, you know, that at times I was so groaning in the spirit. You know, Romans talks about that, um, you know, you, you don't even have words for it. The Bible says we just groan. And and when I would run out of Bible stories and, and scriptures and things to quote, I just sit there and go, God, 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 just be with me, God. Lord, just be with me, God. Have mercy on me, God. You know, the cry of my heart, just pleading to, for life. And um, this manifestation of God, the spirit of God being upon me like that and being able to see it with my physical eyes just gave yeah. me the encouragement to continue to pray, to continue to seek the Lord and to continue to fight for life. Uh, just wrestling um, like I'd never have before. And... Um, after a period of time, the light left me. Yeah. And, you know, this is probably on a time frame. This is probably around three o'clock or so in the, in the, in the morning, you know, the, and uh, again, just this high and low, you know, from being quickened by the Holy spirit in the beginning, it kind of felt like a surge of strength and electricity running through my weak and frail body. Wow. Um, and then, yeah. And then, uh, you know, having this, and then I kind of dipped down again, and, you know, just uh, was praying Psalm 73, 25, and 26. It says, my flesh and my heart fail. My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my life. And so, God, I, you know my heart, my flesh, everything is failing, God. I'm shutting down, God. The doctors can't help me. The nurses can't help me. God, it's, it's my life is in your hands and God in you, I live and move and have my being and uh, just, um, just such an intensity uh, through the whole experience. Uh, and I'm just fighting to stay till the morning. You know, mm -hmm. I felt like, you know, God's mercies are new every morning. It says in Lamentations. And I knew that, I had to make it to the morning. And so the I felt heard a hand on that sliding glass door. That nurse, when she put her hand on that door and started sliding that thing open, and she wheels around and rips that curtain back, felt like I was on like a rocket ship. It was like the spirit of God just came rushing into my body, over my body and just all the way inside of me. And I just had this joy that was just unspeakable. Um, you know, I thought about Lazarus who died. Yeah, I know you're saying, you know, everybody said he did. I didn't die, but I felt that way. That was the first thing that hit my mind was, you know, I'd been given new life. I, I felt this resurrection power just surging up within me and uh, just this joy of the Lord and exuberance. 
you know, I felt like I'd just been pulled out of the lion's den of death, like Daniel, you know, God had yeah, uh, stayed love the that story. Of death. Yeah. yeah, there were such a, there was such a spirit of death mm. in, in the hospital. So many people dying during this time frame between January 4th and February the 5th, uh, when I was released and, you know, I, I thought about the, the children of Israel, you know, they had the mountains on one side and mountains on the other side mm-hmm. and then the water in front of them and the mightiest army in the world, the army of Egypt is coming down upon them. And it was a certain death that they were facing yeah. and God parted the waters. They walked over on dry land, the Egyptian army all drowned in the water. And when they crossed over, uh, they crossed over it was a new beginning. It was like a new life form, and Egypt was forever behind them. And in my spirit, that's what I felt like. I felt like, man, I just had just crossed over to a different dimension, to a different side. Um, you know, medically speaking, the doctors were still extremely worried about me, and you know, as uh, it it didn't look any better. But in my spirit and my faith, I knew that. I knew that I had turned the corner. I knew that I had wrestled with God. And uh, I knew that God had answered my prayer. Uh, you know, I, I uh, just was just exuberant, uh, exuberant with, uh, with the power of God upon me. Um, so happy, so thrilled to be alive, to have uh, made it through the night. And, um, uh, you know, the nurse was just in, a, she was, the nurse was just in a state of shock that I was still there. And, uh, uh, so she didn't speak a word. She left and went, I guess she went back to the nurse and said, you know, what are we going to do with this guy? <laughs> you know, man, this guy's still hanging out with us. Uh, so they wheeled me up into, uh, room 602 to where I would spend another, uh, 30, 29, 30, I was there 30 days, uh, Wow. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that was just, uh, such a, uh, an awesome, um, night, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people want to experience a miracle or experience a God or something like that. But, but trust me, they don't, you don't want to have to do what I had to do. Yeah. You know, no, nobody wants to pay the price, mm-hmm. you know, and I easily, you know, I easily, I mean, it would have been so easy just to roll over and I know I would have died. Yeah. And, uh, but, yeah. You know, the, the word of God says, you know, that we're co-laborers. We're co, we work with God. And, and it says also, I, you know, well-known scripture, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if we can do it, Natalie. We can do it. So we do our part and God does his part. You, you just, know, you, know, you, you got to make the first there. step, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You can't just, you can't just lay back and just say, Hey, you know, God work your magic here. Yeah. You know, you have to, you have to fight and prevail, you know, like Jacob did, like I did, like yeah. Jesus did. And, you know, Paul and all the other saints that, uh, you know, I've, I've heard it said before and it just really resonates with me that, God does not answer prayer. Okay. God answers desperate prayer. Yeah. Okay. All right. God does not answer prayer. God answers desperate prayer. And if you really look at all of the answers to prayer in the Bible, the majority of them are people that were just pleading. You read the Psalms and, you know, God rescue me out of this death trap, yeah. you know, uh, you know, help me escape out of this pit. Uh, using all these things, you know, Hannah wanting to have a child. Uh, yeah. She was pouring out her heart before the Lord. And, the, you know, the priest thought she was drunk in the morning. And <laughs> she's just she's crying and, and pleading with God, you know, God, give me a child. And, of course, the prophet Samuel was birthed out of that. But, yeah. you know, that's where you're at. And, uh, you know, I really credit knowing the word of God. I think it's so important. You know, had I not known the word of God, I don't think I would have had the resource within me to to fight and to prevail and to to uh, plead with God like I did. 
you know, the mm -hmm. word and the spirit go together. We have to have the spirit of God and we need the word of God as well. We need both. And, uh, you know, just the manifestation of the spirit in that room. Um, uh, you know, I think it just, uh, it's Jesus said the words I speak are spirit and their life, their spirit and their life. His words are, and, uh, you know, there's life in the word of God. Uh, you know, it's unfortunate that, you know, most people's experience with Christianity or I call it churchianity. You know, <laughs> yeah. the, some of the times that really the times I walk closest with God is the times I've really been so disenchanted with the traditional church mm. but you know but that does not slight the fact that the word of god is alive it's quick it's powerful you know um it cuts to the heart of the matter and the spirit of god still moves and he's the same always uh, i can definitely see the spirit of god in you you're shining <laughs> you're beaming well thank you yeah well, thank you thank you yeah yeah, there's a scripture in Judges that I really love. It's Judges 6.13. It says, if God be with us, if God is with us, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, you can get some loudmouth preacher or somebody else and, you know, oh, God is in the room. And, but if God be with us, Gideon said, where are all his miracles, which our fathers told us of? So in the Hebrew mindset, you could not separate God from miracles. You know, uh, when Nicodemus went to Jesus, he said, we know you're a man sent from God. No man can do the miracles you're doing except those four words again, God be with him. And so we shouldn't be surprised to have, uh, you know, if we're believers and have faith in Christ, to have supernatural experiences like this. You yes. Know, it's, it, should be, yes. it should be normal, you exactly. know, instead of, instead of someone having raised eyebrows going, what? A light appear to you. Oh my God! Can you hallucinate? You know your brain's playing tricks on you. No, no. And sorry to interrupt uh, you, but that yeah, so interrupt I, me anytime. I, I love that you're a Christian. I love that, and I I'm a believer of Jesus, and I do believe in God, and mm. I pray and I meditate, um, with yeah. protection, of course, you know, by prayer and all that. Um, Amen. but I, I don't go to church, and but. Similar to you, I find myself more spiritual than Christian. And I believe that I have this sort of love fl flowing through me to know that it's what how you give to others and how you show others that love within. I can't, I can't describe like, so God said to well, love your neighbor. You're, you're spot on right there. You're, you're really spot on. You're, you're, you're right there close. You know, first John four, eight says, God is love. Yes, that's right. And you know, love your neighbor you know, as you love yourself. And yeah, if you, so, if you don't love yourself, you, how could you love anybody else? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah. it's the love. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm yeah. about that. <laughs> uh, yeah. And you know, Jesus, uh, Jesus biggest problem was with all the religious folks, you know, the sinners, people like me and you, he didn't have a problem with them. You know, yes. he says that they welcomed him exactly but you know but you have uh you know the religious folks of his time you know they were the ones that crucified him had him put to death you know oh mm -hmm. you know you're doing this you're healing someone on the sabbath oh my gosh you know how terrible someone got healed yeah exactly right mm -hmm. breaks my heart yeah that's yeah. terrible so it, it was just a, a great deal and there are a lot of stories in the book too like uh I share another one here that comes to mind. Um, I was about two weeks in, and I had a uh, a new night nurse, and okay. she's she's coming there. She's you know ten thirty at night or so, and so she's getting up to speed. She's walked in the room, says my name is so and so, and uh, hello. So she's looking at my chart. She's just going, hmm, huh, hmm, 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 hmm. okay, hmm. <laughs> it spends about five minutes and, I, and i'm just sitting there listening to her huh, 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 you know? <laughs> and, uh, and then she says these words she says uh mr ken she said you beat the covid two-step and i've never heard that phrase covid two-step 
And it's people that are so close to death that they feel like they only have like two steps left in them. Wow. I've heard that used, I've heard that used in a snake bite, you know, okay. being an outdoorsman, you know, there's a two stepper, but they call it the COVID, the frontline workers call it the COVID two step. And, mm. uh, and so I shared with her what I've just shared with you and your uh, audience. And, and uh, she was a believer just like you. And she was like, you know, praise God. That's just wonderful. You know, that's the only, you know, as I'm looking at your chart, that's the only way you could be alive. And uh, as, as I was in the room in the morning, uh, one of the doctors and I had kind of, my wife and I had kind of made some nicknames for some of the doctors. You know, I had one that I just loved and I, I called her my cheerleading doctor. No matter how bad it was, you know, she was just so positive and full of love and energy and, you know, just such encouragement to me. And this other doctor, we nicknamed him Dr. Death. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so the I'm in my hospital room in the morning and I see this doctor coming across. I'm in room 602. So I have a I'm right in the middle of the critical, I can see everything that's going on. And I see him as he turns his head in the state of shock to see that I'm alive. He stops, he slows and he comes to the door and he says, you must be a warrior. You must be a warrior. I'm going to keep my eyes on you. Wow. And, okay. You know, I don't I don't know about Australians, but Americans, we don't use that word warrior very much. Mm, okay. You know, he's he's a a foreign doctor. And so but in his, his belief system, which is I would not know I didn't ask him, but it's probably not Christian, but in his belief system told him and the phrase that he used was, you know, you must be a warrior was very significant to me um and uh that just was was very powerful i had a uh, a minister that sent me a message in another from another city had no idea what was going on or anything uh, he had heard that i was just uh, had covid and he sent me this message he says you have prevailed with god you've wrestled with god you have prevailed and you have won the victory you have won the victory, but God will get all the glory. Yeah. And he said, I, I, he said, I, I didn't want to send it like that. He said, I really wanted to give God. He said, I wanted to say, and he said, I fought with God for about 20 minutes on this before I sent you this message. He said, I really wanted to say you've wrestled with God and God has won the victory and God will get the glory. But he, he, um, he didn't, he said, you know, you have wrestled with God. Kind of like we were talking about earlier about, you know, we have a work to do too. Yeah. You have wrestled with God. You have prevailed. You've won the victory and God will get the glory. Yeah. You know, there's that part where we both play in, in this uh, play out in this. And um, yeah, I was just so excited to be alive and uh, a lot more stories I could share different things in there. But uh, uh yeah, that's 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 some good stuff. So yeah, I do have a few questions. Yeah, um, yes, yeah. So the light, the light that you saw, which I'm sure would have been like the most incredible experience. You say that it was God. It, how did you how did you know that it was God? Was it a knowing? Was it a feeling? Did he say anything? Did he show himself? Or was it just pure love? What was it like? all of that all of that yeah all of that yeah in the beginning it was a little bit fearful but as I began to take my breath and realize I wasn't going to die it was I felt love I felt energy I felt the search of power uh just a warmth uh, a radiance and you know I, I just gave me a sense of being alive and uh you know I wasn't alone you know that God was with me in that hospital room on my deathbed. Um, so, really, yeah, all those things you're talking about, it was a, it was all that rolled up into one. It was just such a beautiful experience to see that and to, 
you know, I still have such a vivid memory. I, I replay that almost every day of my life since then. Oh, I would holding, too. <laughs> just holding my arms up and just looking yeah. and seeing this light just. How big it was, was like it? You, is it? Was it like, you know, big? Or like, I'm just so it curious. Was, <laughs> yes. So it was, uh, I'm six foot two uh, and about 200 pounds, but it covered my body. And wow. it was, it was uh, surrounded my body. I mean, it didn't fill the whole room, but it was like it completely covered me. And yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, another yeah. question I have, um, you, you said um, the cheerleader nurse. Do you think yes. it's possible that it, it, she could have been an angel in the form of a nurse? Oh, there's no question. Yeah. You know, we, I really believe that she was just such a godsend to me. And um, I mean, she literally would. The other doctors frowned upon her because they thought it was unprofessional. Yeah. But she would literally jump up off the floor like a cheerleader would. Oh. And she would say, you know, I'm so glad to see you today. You know, you're doing good. Uh, and she would, one of the techniques was COVID pneumonia, which the nurses, the nurses are too busy to do anything, but she would, I would lay on my back and she would just beat my back with her fist. It jars out your lungs and it helps to get the fluid out of your lungs. Wow. And she would, just, uh, or I would sit in my recliner and she'd come over there and massage my shoulders and beat my back and just such a, an encouragement. And I always look forward every day, you know, I said, I got to have my cheerleading doc, you know, I need yeah. her. Uh, yeah. And I, I think there is, you know, just the complete opposite uh, of, uh, you know, the words that were spoken about, you know, people in your condition. There's a flip side of that. She was speaking life to me. Yeah. She was encouraging. Me. She was giving me some love. She was giving me some positive energy you know, and, it, and you could feel it. You could sense it. When she walked in the room, she was what I call a room changer, an atmosphere changer. You felt really good about yourself. You know, she made you, she made you feel so much better um, through the whole experience. Yeah, I, I feel like that would have just been such a good thing for you, you know, being in that situation, you know, not knowing where it's going to turn. And here she comes, this positive woman who just is helping you and making you feel loved and not alone. That's such a beautiful thing. What a blessing. Yes, yes, it was. And you know, I was really so fortunate as well as uh, the hospital had just lifted their policy. So Prior to me getting sick going in on the floor, they, they were not allowing any visitors in. Mm. I mean, I, I knew people, I knew people that died in there. I knew colleagues that I work with, friends that died in there without their wife, without their family, with no one by their side. So, you know, I, I told you, I, when it hit me, it just took me out. Uh, but they allowed my wife, they had just changed it. So my wife literally, you know, you have to just laugh about it, but um, it just like when we were feeding our two month old baby, mm -hmm. she would pick up that fork and she would take it and go, here comes the choo choo train. Choo -choo 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 -choo. Oh, she's beautiful. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, you know, it was just, uh, she helped save my life, you know, yeah. uh, cause I, I couldn't do it. And she's so compassionate and caring and she would come in and you would see, she would see these other patients that were just, no one was taking care of them. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, this is no fault of the, of the nurses. They were just so overwhelmed and yeah. you know, the pandemic it was, it was hitting East Texas. So, uh, but you know, she asked the nurse, she said, can I go in there and feed this man? You know, and they're saying, unfortunately, you know, you can't. We would love to let you do that. Somebody needs to. We just don't, you know, we can't do it. Uh, but that's the kind of heart she has just to try to help people, uh, you know, in, in the condition that they were in. And I had another incident, too, I, I'll share with your listeners. Is, uh, yeah. I had 
gotten to a point where I was uh, getting better with my breathing a little bit. And so they graduated me down to uh, what they call a high flow oxygen mask. And mm -hmm. so I'm no engineer, but when I first saw this mask, I thought, you know, that design looks a little bit funky to me. <laughs> twist and everything and goes up in your I thought you know wow uh, and so during the daytime I was having issues with it for about a week and you know they would come in because there's a lot of people there during the day and uh, you know my wife stayed with me all all day long uh, she would come at eight in the morning and usually leave it before it got dark but so it was easy to get a fix on that I just you know, I see my oxygen level and all the machines start beep, 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 beep. You know, I'm going from 90 to 80 to 70, and that's not a good thing, uh, gasping for air. So, you know, they'd come rushing in and, and, and fix it. So one night I'm there all alone, and, you know, I'm thinking, you know, I've, I've got this whipped, and, you know, we're, we're on the right, right path here. And I rolled over. And the whole mass just broke on my face. Oh. And I'm like, wow, really? I'm hitting that call button, 90 to nothing. I cannot breathe. I'm watching it. You know, the machine's blaring. The noise is going off. Nobody is responding. I learned real quick that call button doesn't work unless somebody's on the other end and they're coming to get you. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm sitting here again. I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know. I'm here gonna again. die. <laughs> yeah. I, I am. I'm here again. Here I am again. And I am just sitting here trying to twist this thing to get this thing to get some oxygen. And and I my last thought was I am gonna die from lack of oxygen. I've beat COVID, I felt like, but I'm gonna die from a lack of oxygen because this stupid mask won't. Yeah. And at the last second, as I thought that the very last second, somehow or another. Uh, I got that thing snapped together and I'm going, wow, just wow. I mean, <laughs> you know, I felt like I was another one breath away from death again. It it only lasted two or three minutes, but man, it seemed like forever. Yeah, and, in those um, moments it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And um, nobody ever came. And so when my wife showed up in the morning, um, she went to the nurse. I told her what happened. I said, wow. Uh and it's those life or death decisions. My nurse was uh, taking care of a brand new patient who was about to die. It was a new admittance. He had just gotten there. And so she said, she told my wife, she said, I heard it. But I'm right here in front of me, life yeah. or death. At this man, if, if I leave him, if I leave him, he's going to die. Surely Ken's not in the same shape. Mm. yeah and well, there you were you know, she she like yeah yeah she she was like I wanted to do both but I couldn't so I just like I had to stay right here and I made a call and she felt terrible again and you know from that night on uh, I you know uh, I just made a decision I said uh, I asked my wife I said well you know we need to get a hold of uh a lady, I know a lady who sits with uh, elderly people through the night. And I said, call her up. I said, and uh, tell her I want her to show up at 1030 and she can leave at, you know, 630 in the morning. And just uh, find out how much money it costs. And yeah. I said, my, my life, I said, my life is worth more than this. Yeah. And so she sat with me. And I mean, again, I wasn't mad at the nurses. I felt sorry for them. In fact, yeah, I understand. I wanted, that, to, yeah. I wanted them to. I wanted them to love me, Natalie. Mm -hmm. We had food brought up four times. I fed the whole sixth floor. My wife and I had food catered. I had it brought in four times to feed all the nurses up there, and I'd have nurses come by my door. It'd slide the door open because you know they're not supposed to be in my room. Thank you, Mister Chin. I wouldn't have been able to eat today if you hadn't had that oh. lunch brought in. You know, I am so busy. I'm so overworked. Thank you for the, the pizza or the sandwich or the barbecue or, you know, and the cookies and the cake, whatever. Uh, 
but I mean, that's the, that's, that's just the reality of the situation. Uh, yeah. So, you know, God I wanted them to know that. for you, Ken. Yeah. Amen. And you yeah. too. And you too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah thank you. And, um, no, absolutely. Uh, you're going to do great things. Mm. And, um, Yes. Yeah. This, your podcast is going to really take off. I believe it. I really hope so, Ken. I really hope so. Um, you know, I'm pretty shy. This is not usually something that I'd ever do. It's not something that I thought I could do, but my passion to actually share these stories is just so important to me that I'm having anxiety right now. You probably can't tell, but no, I, I, I'm, I'm, you. you know, I'm practicing, I'm learning, and I'm, I really feel like it's more important to get these messages out there, and I'm very driven to do so. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's great. You know, it says to stir up the gift that's within you. A lot of times we have gifts, I think, that are hidden in our in our being, and we just mm-hmm. have to stir them up, and we have to utilize it and practice them, and they begin to manifest themselves. Yeah. So, definitely. you know. Yeah. So you're, you know, I would never, I think you're doing great. So thank you. And you know what? I'll bring up something, Ken. I went to go get coffee from Starbucks yesterday. Someone paid for my drink. That's never happened before. So that was pretty cool. Um, Yeah. And yeah, something else happened. I can't, I can't remember. Uh, Well, if I can think of it before the end of the podcast, I'll bring it up. But two or three things happened yesterday. And I was just like, what is going on? I feel like maybe it's a reward for, you know, getting out of my comfort zone and trying something new. These new things are happening and, and the, this new energy is coming my way. And it's, yeah, I'm starting to notice positive things, positive changes. So yeah, things are happening. Very interesting. Yeah, There's, there's no doubt about that, you know, just maybe getting off here a little bit, but you know, there's times where I have just felt led to go somewhere. No yeah. appointment. No appointment, no nothing. And I, I've walked into the room and people are mentioning my name. Wow. That's beautiful. And, you know, and it would be hard. Some of these people, I, I've told, I've shared that story with some people and they're like, my God, you know, you don't walk in on that guy. He's, you, you know who he is? I said, sure, I know who he is. That's why I went to go see him. Yeah. He's really a very influential, important man. But, you know, God opens doors for us and God sends people into our path to help us along the way and to guide us and to be kind to us and be mentors and encouragers. And, uh, you know, it sounds like that's what he's doing in your life. Yeah, I'm definitely noticing it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a blessing. Yeah. And and it's really crazy, too, you know, the, the book, uh, the book's. That's you know, what I wanted to bring up. I was going to say uh, to the viewers, um, he, Ken's going to tell you a little bit about his book, which I, I want you guys to have a look at. And and of course, you'll be able to tell them where they can find it as well. Sure, sure. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, the book's available on Amazon. It's called An Encounter with the Healer. Um, you know, and you can get an e-book, you can get paperback, and we're working on an audio book right now. But, but just as a, a, a note on the book was, you know, when I got out and was dismissed February the 5th, uh, um, I was in my, I'd be in my study writing some notes down and my wife comes in, she says, what are you doing? I said, well, I just, I said, I feel so compelled to write my story. Wow. And it's not, it's not what I do. Uh, I, I just feel so compelled. I cannot let it go. You're not a writer, is and that she, what you mean? Or? No, I'm not a writer. No, no. Yeah. Okay. And she, she's like, this is the darkest period of our lives ever. Let's forget it. Let, you know, why are you doing this? Let's forget it. Let's put this behind <laughs> us. Let's go to the mountains. Let's go to the beach. You know, let's take a couple of weeks and let's go on a vacation. Just get out of here. And I said, you know, I hear you. We're, we're going to do that for sure. But uh, I said, I have to do this. So the book was really, really just, uh, I, again, I just felt compelled by God to write the book. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, I'm not to promote books. I, you know, I'm not, but, and it sounds bad me saying it, but the book is anointed. It's yeah. an anointed book. I mean, yeah. I, I'm, you know, you're going to say, well, everybody says that. Well, maybe everybody, but, uh, 
if you read the reviews on Amazon, and it's only been out about a month, and if you saw the messages that I'm getting and the text and emails from people, um, I'm just like, wow, really? You know, it's like it's very humbling that that um, that God would use that book in such a powerful way to touch so many people's hearts and lives for the Lord and draw them closer to God. And, and, uh, you know, so, I mean, some of them are preachers and mm -hmm. teachers and influential people. And they're like, man, that, that, that put a whole new spin on prayer and, and, uh, calling out to God that I've never experienced in my life. But uh, yeah. So there's yeah, my sales pitch, Natalie. Yeah, tell the people. <laughs> I'm happy to yes. promote, you know, go ahead. If, if it's going to change someone's life, I'm all for it. Yeah, Definitely. yeah. And that's, that's, that's what I felt. I, I told my wife, I said, I, did, I don't care if anybody reads it or not. Mm. I said, I And have that's to why do you're going to be successful. That's exactly why. I said, I said that's, I said, I don't, I don't care. You know, mm. I mean, I have. God has blessed me in so many different ways that Aww. the book's irrelevant. Uh, but, uh, yeah, but when I started getting all these messages back from people, yeah, it kind of changed my heart a little bit. I thought, wow, if it's impacting people's life that much, I need to try to, again, do my part and let people know about it, yeah. you know, so it can change more people's lives. Uh, okay. It can be an encouragement to them, you know, they, they don't have to be in a hospital room about to die from COVID. You know, everybody has, everybody's dealing with issues. Everybody's got something going on. Yeah. And if it can encourage someone to deal with whatever they're dealing with, whether it's an addiction or, you know, financial problems or, mm -hmm. you know, marital problems or, you know, whatever is happening in their lives, uh, you know, uh, Praise God, let it help them and let it encourage them to call out on the Lord, you know, and seek him. Uh, that's a good thing. Beautiful, Ken. Thank you so much. Um, uh, before we go, I'll just ask you if you could tell uh, the listeners um, just one last message. You know, what's something that you learned from this experience that you could give to them for, for those who have lost loved ones or for those who are, you know, fearful of, of death in itself or just people who are having, you know, relatives, friends, family who are struggling themselves? What's something that you could give them as a takeaway for your message today? Yeah, just really um, value your time, value your loved ones. And um, I'm going to throw in a quick story here. It's a, it just hit me. Uh, when I was dismissed from the hospital on February 5th, um, they wheeled me down in a wheelchair and got me in the car. And and I, I noticed, you know, my wife's driving it. I noticed we're not moving. Mm -hmm. We're not going anywhere and so I look at her and she's just crying and weeping and and I just sat there it was just such a precious moment I grabbed her we embraced and we both cried and you know people behind us didn't care and um but she didn't think we would ever be leaving that hospital together Aww. again and just to really value your loved ones and treasure your time. I mean, really treasure your time. People uh, always try to help people, but if people are always, if you got people in your life that are dragging you down, that are pulling you down, yeah, you know, try to help them, but don't let them have such a negative impact upon your life, you know, that it's going to affect the joy of the Lord that you might have. Um, and just uh, the things that we take for granted, oh my gosh. Just breathing. <sighs> that was good. Just when you, you know, when when you have a mask over your face for a month, you know, just the breath of God, you know, the <sighs> that's just powerful. Being able to just pick up a pen, to take a fork and put food in my mouth. I, I'm right. I'm not a crybaby. I'm not a crybaby, Natalie. I'm a tough guy, okay? But uh, I found myself at restaurants at times, and uh, the memory will all of a sudden come back and, and hit me. 
and I'll realize, you know, that I couldn't even pick a fork up to put that into my mouth to feed myself. And, um, you know, it's just, uh, you know, so many things we take for granted. Uh, yeah, love on your kids, uh, love on your family and friends and, you know, uh, serve the Lord, you know, make every moment count for God. Uh, you know, there's a saying that I've heard, it's always stuck with me through my life is only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. And when I am dying, how happy I shall be if the light of my lamp has been burned out for thee. Mm. And it really puts everything into perspective, time and eternity. And, you know, where your heart is, there your treasure will be. You know, um, there's some really profound lessons to learn and uh, just uh, um you know, be still and know that I am God. Just yeah. take time for the Lord and, yeah, take time to meditate and to pray and to, you know, renew your mind, renew your spirit. Uh, All right. Well, it's been a pleasure having you, Ken. Um, and thank you so much. We'd love to have you back one day because I'm sure you've got so many more stories to tell. But, yeah, thank you so much for your messages and sharing your story. And, um, yeah, I appreciate you. Uh, you bet. Appreciate you too, Natalie. God bless you. God bless all your listeners. Uh, and I really enjoyed it. You, you did <laughs> great. Thank all you. Right. All right. You have a good day. All right. Bye. Bye. Hi, it's Natalie again. If you guys liked my last video, please like, share and subscribe as well as hit the notification bell so that I can notify you for future videos. Thanks again for watching. This is Natalie from NDE Talk, and I hope to see you again.